102 years ago this month, another deadly pandemic reached Central Virginia. Yeah, the virus that became known as the Spanish flu forced schools and churches to close and overwhelmed Charlottesville's largest hospital. NBC 29's Matt Tallhelm takes us back in history to explore the lessons learned and lost from the pandemic of the past. Charlottesville's Daily Progress newspaper first reported a local death from the influenza pandemic on this day, September 30th, 1918. The virus claimed a student at Fork Union Military Academy. It spread swiftly, killing hundreds of people in Charlottesville and Albemarle County by the winter. They are a missing branch on many family trees whose stories are only now coming to light as we fight COVID-19. Dear Papa, on September the 29th, 1918, from Blacksburg, Virginia. The faded ink of penmanship preserved on paper. I received your very appreciative letter last Monday. Provide David Whalen the, the only out. connection. All of the soldiers left here yesterday. To his uncle Charles. He and my father were very close to each other. Charles was early in his freshman year at Virginia Polytechnic Institute when he wrote this letter home to Crozet. We are supposed to begin to study our lessons or get started in our courses here this week. Here was a very healthy young 18 year old, I guess 18, 19 year old student at Tech who was doing fine, not, not, didn't have a care in the world. A month later, Charles was dead. I never heard them talk about it at all. Had to, had to be very painful to talk about it. David discovered what happened to his uncle in a series of letters dispatched from Blacksburg. Here, here's that letter. They describe 10 anxiety-filled days. The doctor told me that his lungs were clearing today. Of a mother caring for her ailing son in the campus infirmary. Charles makes my heart ache because I know he has been so lonesome and he doesn't want me to leave, leave him. A front page notice in the November 1st Daily Progress reported the news home. Charles A. Wayland is flu victim. It describes him as a young man of much promise. It's really sad. It, I mean, it came so fast on him and I guess on others too, it seems like. Wayland's is one of dozens of death notices that became a daily part of the newspaper's publication as the influenza pandemic spread through central Virginia in the fall of 1918. 16-year-old schoolgirl victim of Spanish influenza announced the headline October 3rd with the death of Rebecca Edwards. John Hamilton Rhodes was a hotel clerk whose death was hastened by an attack of Spanish influenza. The newspaper announced the death of Judson McManaway October 11th, remembering him as a splendid young man whose brother was quite sick with the same insidious malady. Within a week to 10 days, the death certificates just pick up and pick up and pick up, and these were children and uh, teenagers and adults and others all all dying. University of Virginia School of Medicine researcher Adine Kelly spent years studying the impacts of the 1918 pandemic on Charlottesville and Albemarle County. It was a major crisis everywhere it struck. Days after the first reported death, Charlottesville's mayor ordered schools, churches and theaters shut down. The grip closed a grocery store when its owner showed symptoms. Within a week, the paper published a plea from the district nurse. Mrs. Harris is overrun and needs many volunteer workers to care for whole families stricken with the virus in many parts of the city. The federal government had no resources to help anybody. And the state had no resources either except to give advice. Therefore, the full weight of the pandemic fell on local officials and the local community. The 200-bed University of Virginia Hospital stopped taking in patients. Its now tattered and taped together register offers a record of patients admitted for influenza pneumonia. Some recovered, 
diagnosed as well. Between the number of doctors that were assigned to the university hospital and the number of nurses there, it made a great deal of difference in local health. The hospital register also provides a partial tally of the local death toll. Usually the most severe cases went to hospitals. Almost everyone was taken care of at home. That was the norm. Kelly estimates the flu killed at least 400 people in Charlottesville and Albemarle County. Yet the pandemic never blazed across the newspaper banner. That's because the nation was at war. Central Virginia families were sending their sons to the front lines of World War I. Names of men wounded or dead in battle stole headlines from the fight against the deadly flu at home. The influenza pandemic faded from cultural memory before very many years. But I don't think we really learned the lessons. Retired pediatrician Dr. Michael Dickens is working to connect the past century's pandemic to the one we're fighting with masks and social distancing today. And I think the war really brought everybody together as a Opposed to now where, you know, it's clear that we're not all together in terms of how we're all reacting. He's uncovering recommendations public health officials published in the paper war. at the time. They didn't have a Dr. Fauci uh, standing up there. And searching archives of the Albemarle Charlottesville Historical Society. The, the flow of information was slow in getting out and there wasn't this constant churning of facts and rumors and counter rumors like what we see now. Dr. Dickens is able to draw comparisons between well, the flu and COVID pandemics. In both, volunteers came together to make masks. Lockdowns and quarantines slowed the spread. Or there's no real treatment for any of these highly infectious diseases. They were very used to the idea of being quarantined. Dickens says the flu disproportionately affected Charlottesville's black population, just like COVID-19. When they got sick, the deck was already stacked against them because of poverty and malnutrition. Dr. Dickens worries medical advancements, treatments and vaccines make it easy for people to forget pandemics of the past. He believes progress comes by following the science. They're, they're following the basic biology of the virus, which doesn't change from generation and century to century. It's still the virus versus us and our immune system. I will stay with Charles as long as I am needed. Even though a century separates these words from David Wayland. It's all coming, coming back in, 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 in lots of ways. The 84-year-old can relate to his family's loss now that he's living through a pandemic like the one that claimed the uncle he never knew. No, no family is uh, immune from, from, from it then or, or today. The 1918 influenza pandemic was shorter and deadlier than today's coronavirus. It hit hardest over just a six month period. The last patient was admitted to UVA hospital in early February 1919. By Kelly's estimate, it claimed one person out of every 100 people living in Charlottesville and Albemarle County, all branches lost from family trees. Matt Tallhelm, NBC 29 News.